Emerson, thanks for joining us. No worries, thanks for having um, me. No, thanks for being the first one off the rank. Oh, a bit of pressure, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure here, um, I, I promise you. Um, I want to start with just talking about sort of where you came from, how your life was growing up and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, a lot of people that choose trades, to me, seem to be their parents were tradies or what have you. Um, so, like, your family, friends, you know, um, what did your folks both work growing up? Like, tell us a bit about where you came from. Yeah, you're spot on. Uh, so, my dad is an electrician as well. Uh, so, I grew up around the trade with that. My mum is a librarian. Uh, I grew up in Safety Bay, just down the road. Right. Uh, I've spent my whole life living down there and naturally kind of moved into a, into a trade role. A lot of my friends went that way and it's just how I, was, how I was brought up, yeah, especially with dad being an electrician. Mm. And you, your mum was in a librarian. Yeah, so. librarian, yep. So was there a lot of reading when you were a kid? Oh, she tried, but there was, <laughs> it was mostly out the back with dad, yeah. Right, yeah, I managed okay. to stay out of the books. Yeah, yep. no, no, mostly out the back. No, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and obviously your parents both worked, as, yep. as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so you, you an only child? You got brothers, sisters? No, I've got two younger brothers. Okay. Um, I'm actually quite lucky. One of my brothers works with me at SMEC, uh, as well as my dad now. Yeah. Uh, during my apprenticeship, my dad came on board and I was lucky enough to be able to give my younger brother a job as well. So he's uh, just started his third year, so he's into it. And Excellent. Then, yeah, my, my youngest brother, he's at university. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So two out of three went into a trade. Two out of three went the trade route, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Um, I wanted to talk about that real quickly as well, about sort of how you came out of school and went into a trade. Mm -hmm. um, I was going through your resume online, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed you graduated in 2015. I did, yep. Um, a, few years, a few years after me, <laughs> if you can tell by the grey hairs. Um, but you didn't start your apprenticeship until 2018. Yeah. So what happened with those years in between? What where what happened where was it's a bit of a strange one so straight out of school i went the uni path okay. um i got accepted into curtin university and i was studying bio biology and i was enjoying that for the first kind of six months and then realized it wasn't really for me uh was a bit unsure of what i wanted to be doing and it just didn't feel right so i put on hold deferred for a little bit mm -hmm. and then i was very into kite surfing at the time and i was very fortunate to pick up a few sponsors uh, really? and they kind of funded me for a few years and I got to travel and I competed around the world and toured and and rode in some amazing places so kind of put university on hold and it got to the point where they were telling me oh look you've got to come back and do a unit otherwise we're gonna have to shut it out you know so mm. I was just kind of made the call that I'll, I'll pursue the kite surfing for a little while and university wasn't really for me like I wasn't fully sold on what I wanted to do I was unsure if that was the right path, you know, I chopped and changed degrees a few times within that six months and oh. so yeah, I just pulled the pen on that and pursued the kite surfing for a little while. Hmm. And, and why, forgive me for the ignorance, why biology? Oh, I was right into sports and sports science sort of stuff through high school and I uh, studied human biology and sports science at, yeah. at Colby Catholic where I went to school um, and it was just a natural progression, you know, so Hmm. It's just where I kind of went, but it felt like I was still at high school when I got there. I was I was learning the same things that I was doing at school, and yeah. it just wasn't wasn't for me. So, would you say that there was a bit of um, pressure? I would say I should say to go to university instead of picking up a trade or or going and doing your kite surfing thing. I mean, yeah. you must have had people going, "What are you doing? Why are you?" Yeah, going mum, and doing mum was a little kites? bit like that, but yep. she, you know, she got on board. But now. Uh, yeah, there was a fair bit of pressure. I, I applied myself pretty hard at high school, you know, I did I did well, got good results. So it was kind of just naturally, you kind of groomed that way. Mm -hmm. um, you, you pushed that way, I guess. It wasn't really entertaining, the idea of a trade during, during my high school years. So mm. yeah, it was kind of just always looking at uni and that was kind of the option that I was given mostly, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. It's interesting you say that was the option that you were given. Mm. Um, there seems to be this thing, um, at least that I, I can see, and I'm a little bit removed from it now, mm -hmm. um, where people who are particularly bright or work really hard or are lucky enough to have a combination of the both mm. um, seem to get pushed down that higher education Yeah, and that's, that's just what happened. It's kind of, I was never really entertained with the idea of a trade. Like, I was aware of it, obviously, with my dad working in a trade and mm -hmm. a lot of my mates were heading that way, but 
for me at school, I was always kind of pushed towards higher education, towards university. Even though I was always fairly unsure of what direction I'd, I'd go. I'd, oh, if you ask my parents, I'd chopped and changed my mind about mm -hmm. education so many times. So, but yeah, I was always kind of heading that way. Mm. And if you, if you had your time over again, would have you sort of done that same thing and done six months or would have you just gone, nah, hang it, I'm going to Europe or? Yeah, well, I, would, I would have got straight into my trade, to be honest. Like, yeah. There's not much that I'd change. Like the kite surfing, everything was really fun and I wouldn't be able to do that if I was doing a trade, but I'd, I'd get straight into the trade, yeah, mm. for sure. Okay. Um, so moving down a few years later, mm -hmm. 2018, mm -hmm. you start your electrical apprenticeship. Yep. Um, why electrical of all of them? You've gone from school to biology, yeah. now to electrical. Was that just because of your dad being in the trade, or it was it was largely because of dad, I guess. Like yeah. dad always told me that he didn't really want me to be an electrician. Like he didn't want me to be the same as him. Right. Um, but it just it was the one that's most interesting to me. You know, like I, when I started kind of coming to the realisation that kite surfing wasn't going to be a forever thing for me. Like, I didn't want it to be a career. I wanted it to stay a hobby. The opportunities were cool, but I never wanted to be a job, you know. So mm -hmm. I started to look into into a trade and, and uh, being an electrician kind of had the most appeal to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I just met a few people at the right time uh, that, that helped me get into the role. So yeah. it's just, it's the most diverse, the, there's the most opportunities. And I think the future's so strong with it. There's... Um, not worried about running out of work ever, so uh -huh. it just felt like the best option. Yeah, out of out of all the trades, out of you all mean, the trades, or? yeah, I looked into them all. I got mates that are roofers, concreters, heavy diesel fitters, all of it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, Sparky was the was the pick for me. And what's what's particularly caught your eye about the future? You you mentioned that looking to the future, mm -hmm. yeah, you're never going to be out of work. No, nah, I no. mean, there's so much going on, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to condense this into you know, a 10 minute package or a 20 minute package or anything, you could yep. talk for weeks about this for stuff. Sure. But what do you see in particular that you're going, that's cool, I'm gonna be working on that and I'm gonna be doing this? Yeah, just automation and, and the future of power supply, all going renewable and mm -hmm. and just reducing carbon emissions. It's all, it's all everything's gonna be electrical, mm -hmm. everything. So there's it's no shortage of work for us for, mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. So, and it's just getting more interesting. Like. Even in mining, um, well, I work in mining, and as the demand for critical minerals gets higher and higher and higher, the the way that we're mining is just getting smarter, getting safer, getting automated, and that's all driven by electrical. Mm. So mm. It, it's a great trade to be involved in at the moment. Mm. That's awesome. That's Yeah, it, it boggles my mind, genuinely. Yeah, I mean, it does. Me too. Look, you know. every day you meet another electrician that's doing pushing in another direction, and you just, there's just so much to it. I, you, no one knows everything about electricity. There's just far too much. There's no one's worked in every job. No one can even describe to you like what you're going to be doing in a year. Mm. It's changing that quick and growing that quick. Wow. It, it's very entertaining almost. Yeah. And it's great. I, I mean, being in in media, you know, you see the advancements that we have had in. You know, for, I don't know. I bought a new phone recently. Cool. Right, and I haven't had one for six years, a new phone. My last one was, I bought in 2016, and I've had it since. It it just, it died earlier this year, and I went, oh, I've got to buy a new one. So mm -hmm. I waited for a new, one of the new Google phones to come out. Cool. Bought that. That was light years different, mm -hmm. right? And the, the voice automation and everything like that. And you don't really generally think about that when it comes to a power socket mm -hmm. or, you know, an Ethernet port or anything for like sure, that. Yeah. But what you're saying is that there's... A lot of stuff going on oh, in that field. There's evolvement, yeah. It's it's wild the 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 progress that the companies are making in making things safer and and more efficient and lower emissions and everything is just getting better and better and better and quickly, mm. very quickly. And are we on the forefront of it here in Australia? No, nah, probably not. Okay. Nah, we're we're trying. There's there's certainly companies within Australia that are pushing for the renewable sector. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually involved with one at SMEC where pushing in, in that direction as well. And no, uh, there's people trying. I mean, we're probably not quite as technologically advanced as other countries, but there's certainly no lack of effort. It's just, we're getting the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about SMEC just for a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, they're in renewables. So tell us a bit about it. Yeah. You've obviously, you've worked for them for some time. Yeah, five years um, now. Almost, five yeah. years, there yeah. you go. So they're, they're obviously a terrible company to work for. Yeah, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, what, Give us, give us the lowdown. Give us the elevator pitch. Yeah, so they're uh, primarily, when I started, were a mining contractor, really, um, supplying labour and 
manufacturing, underground starter boards, panels, substations. That's kind of how it was when I started and, and it's diversified pretty quickly. We're doing all sorts of work. We're still mainly supplying the mining industry. Mm -hmm. um, the owner, Martin Law, managing director, he's getting into the renewable sector with a few business ventures of his, of his that Smeka tied up in. So we're going to be supplying um, vanadium redox flow batteries. Um, I'm actually going to be going and installing one for the first time for me in the next two weeks. So that's very exciting. Okay. Um, so it's just full off-grid power setups that will have the ability to run bore pumps, mine camps, and and bigger and better. Mm. But yeah, it's still still pretty new for us. So right. work in progress. No, that's that's incredible. I mean, I've had conversations with numerous people over the last little while about renewables not being able to keep up with mining and steel production and all mm. that kind of stuff. Mm. But it seems like it's getting there. They'll get there. They'll yeah. get there. I mean, the the energy demand of those industries is massive, mm. but it's it's achievable. There's already mines in Western Australia that are almost entirely green, mm. whether it's solar or wind powered, and, and using battery storage. They're they're getting there, mm. Mm. one by one. That's just boggles my mind. It really but it's does. great that those companies are getting on board with that because it's it's quite a big investment up front to to install that sort of infrastructure. But they recognise that it's the, what they need to do for the environment and that they will pay for themselves. So yeah, they, uh, it's good to see people getting on board with it. Mm, absolutely. Um, now, you you mentioned that you'd been working for these guys for five years. Mm. Um, you were also an, an apprentice through EGT. Yep. Um, and EGT is one of our arms mm -hmm. um, here at ECA. Um, why did you go through EGT? Uh, so I went through EGT just because that's how SMEC were employing all of their apprentices at the time. Oh. Um, so I met Tony Ohm, the operations manager at SMEC, and got talking, got along well, and he offered me the role to come down and get involved. And I spent a couple of months on the tools as like a TA, I guess, at SMEC. And then, yeah, he signed me up through EGT, and oh. that's how I did my apprenticeship. So I was with EGT, but I spent my whole my whole time uh, at SMEC, yeah. Okay. So a bit different to how other people do it, but yeah, yeah that's how, how my time was. Okay, and, and how was the experience at EGT? It's great. Uh, they take all the all the hard and annoying stuff out of the process. Um, you've always got your field officer on the phone. Um, I made plenty of calls to, to Gary Livett, he was a legend, yep. yeah, so yep. spoke to him plenty and just helps with, uh, if you're having dramas with, with anything at work, even personal, if, if that's, you're having dramas there, they're always always willing to talk and mm. help out and help to me. I'd, with my work schedule, I had to change dates with college a few times. Uh, so they were always helpful with that and just arranging that and making sure that I could get the tuition that I needed throughout the time and being flexible with a kind of difficult industry to work in. So that mm. was that was great. Mm. But yeah, they they super helpful. Yeah. Super helpful. And you, obviously you'd recommend them to people. For sure. Yeah, yeah it's easy. and. And a lot of people that are with AGT get to move around and try different employers and see different parts of the industry. Uh, I like that's a cool opportunity. It's not one that I took advantage of, but a lot of people that come in and out of SMEC over my apprenticeship and even some of my apprentices now, they are in AGT and they've got a very diverse range of experience for for young apprentices. So that's that's a pretty golden opportunity. Mm. You come to the end of your time and you're experienced in a lot of different fields. So that's. That's mm. golden, I reckon. Um, you mentioned, you just said something there that I went, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. You said my apprentices. Yeah. So you've now got people under you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got apprentices. Yeah. Which is cool. It's awesome. It's uh, it's kind of terrifying. Like a couple months ago, like nearly a year ago, I was an apprentice and now I'm looking after apprentices. But mm -hmm. it, it's it's great. It's great because I can help them with, with everything and pass on what I've been taught. Mm. In my case, it's really cool. My dad was my tradesman for some of my apprenticeship and now my brother is my apprentice so okay so that's pretty cool to pass it on like that yeah. um but yeah I've, I've got a few apprentices and we get to take them out bush and show them show them what's going on and introduce them to things that they've never seen like not many people have worked in underground mines and mm. installed substations in underground mines so it's all always cool we'll get a young apprentice out there and get him involved and yeah and pass it on it's, Absolutely. it's awesome yeah it's, it's an interesting life, isn't it, working mm. on mine sites and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Um, and I want to get on to talking about FIFO in just a tick. Mm -hmm. um, but just before we do, um, I just want you to tell, take us through, and it's great that you're, you're actually in your high vis yeah, today, so yeah. this, is, this is awesome. Um, a lot of people don't really know what a trade looks like outside of 
Well, I mean, they see the viral TikToks of people singing on site and having a dance and all that. And oh, yeah, don't say much of that. My dad's a builder, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, okay. I, um, I understand the. Uh, that's all very different. It's you know, yeah, some of that stuff does happen, but it's like the the point two of a percent. Yeah, that you actually don't say occurs. that much of that. No. Um, what's the typical day of? Uh, what's a typical day in the life of Emerson? Oh, uh, it's an early start. Yeah, it's always an early start. Um, Typically, my, my work days are away, so I'm on a mine site. Uh, it's an early start, go crib, breakfast, get your lunch into it. There'll always be a pre-start. and I mean, it's, it's good. You're working with, with good blokes all day, learning things. It's, they're long days. They're long days, but you get used to it. And uh, When you're at home working in the city, it's awesome. You, you'll have your early start. You'll do your eight, ten hours, you know, and then you knock off. And in summer, you've got a few hours in the afternoon, sun mm -hmm. and get to hang out with your mates and no, it's a, it's good like it's it's not daunting the long days or the early mornings like some people don't like getting up early but you get used to it pretty quick yeah you get to get dirty you get filthy and roll around and no, it's good it's mm. good yeah and you say you start early yeah just so people have an idea of how early mm. because you know if, if my uh my partner was watching this for example okay. she would go Early, that's like five o'clock. You know, she's a nurse, yeah, um, yeah. so she's up generally quite early to start early. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, it might be getting up to catch a plane, so that's like three thirty in the morning. Yeah, that, yeah um, that's early. Is this is this early? Is that what? Yeah, we're it depends. About? Like what side I'm on and kind of what the the routine is. But usually, I'm up by four o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually, and that kind of just carries on to my home life as well. Now it's just yeah. always up at four o'clock. My partner works five first, so we're Bloody both up at four o'clock and into mm. the day, which is actually great. Mm. Like I have no interest in sleeping in. That's wasted hours, as far as I'm concerned. Like I'm yeah. early to sleep because I'm just stuck in the routine. So mm. up early, sun's up, job's on, into it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. So that's a real day. That's a life in the real, a real day in the life. Yeah, it's, it's even on day. break. You know, real, real day in the life is you're up early and you're going hard and you're enjoying it and mm. having fun, ripping in. Awesome. It's good. Yeah. That's yeah. That's awesome. Um, you and your other half mm -hmm. are both FIFOs. We are, yep. Give us, well, not so She's much. She's actually an electrical apprentice too now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Not one of yours. Not one of mine. No, she works at a different company. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, why FIFO? I mean, I understand it's WA. In mm. WA, there is a big thing about FIFO. Um, before we were rolling here, I was telling you about how I'm, I'm from Sydney yep. originally. Um, and we hear all the time on the East Coast about, you mm. know, FIFO and particularly a lot of discussion around money and so on and so forth with it. Sure. Um, and I didn't quite understand it until I actually got here and massive, I have right? friends here who do it and yeah. they just, you know, oh, yeah, I'm a fire. And it's it rolls off the tongue like yeah, anything normal. else. Like, oh, I, I, you know, I drive a Holden. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, it's I'm a just, FIFO. It's just normal, right. yeah. But why choose it? Oh, I mean, everyone's going to think straight away the money. I mean, the money's there. For mm -hmm. sure, you you can make really good money working away. Um, there's a bit of a sacrifice for it, but also beyond the sacrifice, there's a lifestyle that's just awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get into your even time rosters, if that's what you want, if you want to just have fun, enjoy enjoy your time, you know, you can work an eight and six or a two and two and and have half the year off. Mm. Really, like you're still making good money and you've got half the year off. Yeah, which is an awesome way to do it. A lot of a lot of my mates work a two and two, so then on their R and R, they can drive up the coast. You know, they can they'll drive up to Exmouth and and spend their break there. Like, mm. it's easy. You got that whole two weeks. No one's calling you. Like, you just you're off. Mm. And it's off Monday to Friday as well. So there's no crowds around. Like, yeah. you can you can have a really cool lifestyle doing it. But also, there's jobs out there that are pushing three and ones, two two and ones, or the three and ones now as well, which you can go and make some good coin quick. Mm. Like, if you just put your head down for a year get on a construction gig and you can make make money quick. So mm. that draws a lot of people in. But mm. for me, it's lifestyle, yeah. Lifestyle and opportunity. Mm. There's a lot of room for growth career-wise out there, but, yeah, lifestyle and opportunity, for mm. sure. And it's kind of more interesting than electrical in Perth, in my mind. There's, like, good opportunities in an industrial environment in Perth, but not as much. So mm. uh, for me, yeah, lifestyle and opportunity mm. uh, are the big draw for, for FIFO. Mm. So, I mean, it would... It offers you freedoms, obviously, that mm. maybe a standard nine to five, like I work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it affords you different different freedoms. It than, does, yeah. Than yeah, there's, work. there's sacrifice. It's like it's all give and take, but mm. for me, it's worth it. Like I can't imagine working in Perth. I mean, I am 
sometimes I have to. Like yeah. I'm kind of on an R and R at the moment, and there was an opportunity to get involved and help out in a job that was interesting to me. And I was like, ah, oh, it's winter, you know, the weather's not that good, so yeah. go and go to work on my break and make a bit of extra coin, and mm. you can you can do that as well, which is which is golden. Mm, mm. Um, and. You mentioned a two and two, so that's two weeks on, two weeks off. You yeah. also mentioned an eight and six. I eight assume six, that's yeah. eight days, six days yeah. off. Yeah. Um, where are these locations generally? I mean, I know that they're remote mine sites. Yeah. Um, but for anyone who maybe is watching this and isn't quite familiar with West Australian geography, mm. um, yeah, you're talking FIFO means fly in, fly out. So you it are does. on a plane, you go somewhere. Yeah. Um, how remote are these mine sites? How remote are we talking? Well, so I say FIFO, I work for a contractor, so we obviously have to get vehicles around a fair bit. So I do quite a lot of driving as well. Mm-hmm. So to answer that question, last week I had to drive home from a mine site and it was 987 kilometres. <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea. There's there's yeah. ones that are a lot further from Perth. Like iron ore sites right all the way up north inland of in around Newman and up there, they're, they're a long way from Perth. I generally servicing kind of Kalgoorlie through to Mekathara sort of area. So yeah. a couple hundred k's from the coast yeah. on a plane, two hours. Yeah. 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 But on a, in a car, 10 hour day driving. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty far. Wow. So, I mean, that's the distance from, it's a little under the distance from Sydney to Melbourne. So yeah. That's, there you go. So, you know, it's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, my hat off to you. <laughs> yeah. It's a fair bit of driving out. Now, the last time you and I chatted mm. was at the Nika Awards, yep. um, where you won Apprentice of the Year for the fourth time, four years in a row. The first one to do it. Yeah. Hopefully not the last, um, but definitely the first one. And during that chat, you said to me that your next aspiration, the next goal for you is boss man. Mm. That's where you want to want to go to. For sure. Yeah. And people know that. And yeah, people yeah. Aren't I'll make it public, yeah. Uh, yeah, people yeah. aren't shy of it. Um, what I'm interested in is, is knowing what opportunities that being boss man or the boss mm. will give you that you don't have now. It's the opportunity to create your own team look, and, and bring everyone up the way that you, you want them to and create an environment that is just, that I think is right. I mean, working for SMEC, they're great. They've got a great environment, but there's still things that you could do differently with your own team. And, and that's kind of the most exciting part for me. And give the opportunities to my team and, and just pass on what I've learned. And yeah, I think that's the, the most exciting part and diversify business. That's, mm-hmm. that's interesting to me as well. Push businesses in different directions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just take control, I guess, and, and, and push it how I want to. Mm-hmm. That, and that's, that's the exciting part of it. Mm. I mean, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is mm. building business and building your own business, but also being able to pass on your your information. Yeah, you want to be able to share what you've learned. Like, yeah. I've worked for some incredibly talented and incredibly smart people, so to be able to pass on what I've learned, like, it'd be greedy to hold it all, you know? Yeah. And the, if you pass it on, like, sooner I pass on what I've learned, the sooner I don't have to do the hard jobs that I'm doing at the moment. So yeah. that's the cool part as well. Like, you do your time, you, you, get, you master what you're doing, and then you teach and, and, and help progress it. Mm. Awesome. So that, that's quite a bit of appeal in all that for me. Mm. No, it's, fan- it's good to have a, a selfless attitude to it as well, not yeah. a selfish attitude, um, which is, you know, it's, it's really good to see. Um, similarly with that, I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, what being an electrician, maybe not necessarily specifically FIFO, mm-hmm. but what the role actually affords you outside of work. Um, I somehow, I'm not saying you don't like your job, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it's not the thing that gets you up. Of a nah, it's not, what, it's not what drives you all the time, is it? Nah. So well, I suppose what I'm really asking is what's, what's your why? You know, what gets you up in the morning? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how and how does being a Sparky or an electrician or someone in the electrotechnology trade um, help you achieve that why like what's what's the goal for you where's aside from being boss man yeah yeah, and uh so boss man that's the work life you know um what gets me up in the mornings i love traveling exploring especially this beautiful country riding into my four drives boating fishing so working as a sparky we we make good money so it it helps you afford the toys Mm -hmm. which is which is gold that's a massive part for me so being able to afford the toys that i want set it up how i want 
and then be able to ha- afford to have the time off and go and enjoy it. So mm. I've actually only just recently got back from a trip up the coast. I spent a couple of weeks up around Caratha, around that area, mm-hmm. and went camping out on islands and like remote coast. Like it was, it was wicked. So bit of a bit of an understanding on how how machinery works and and how technology works is pretty handy when you're a long way from any help. So yeah. being able to power your car so that you can charge your batteries and have cold beers in the fridge. Like yeah. being able to set all that up yourself is pretty cool. But yeah, yeah the being a sparky and being in a trade, yeah, we make good money early. You make you get paid to learn. So like you make good money through your apprenticeship and like I could buy my dream car when I was an apprentice and mm. set it up throughout. And now as a tradesman you don't have to work as much as if, if you don't want to or you can kind of find a balance and you can spend more time enjoying it and mm. yeah I've been been doing quite a bit of that so that's a lot of my motivation at the moment mm. getting out and enjoying it so what I'm what I'm hearing you say on that is not only does it afford you the lifestyle and the, the actual work itself is fantastic mm. um, but it's the other stuff that you do with your life in your case four-wheel driving or whatnot or for someone it might be buying a house and having a couple of kids yeah, or it sure, might be yeah. you know overseas european holidays or mm. you know starting a winery or something yeah um pretty fair to say that for that's... sure uh, you can you can afford the lifestyle that you want to live you know you've got to knuckle down and, and do the work but where you can you can do whatever you want really mm. yeah mm. So, which is cool so taking you back to 2015 emerson yep very very scarily i know yeah yeah um if you'd have stuck with biology mm. and or gone into sports science or something like that, do you think that you would have been able to hit your goals that you're hitting now as quickly? Nah, I'd only still be learning really, wouldn't you? I don't know. I don't think I ever would have stuck with those degrees, so it's hard mm. for me to imagine. I'd probably still be jumping around trying to work out what I want to do yeah. and, and just not being fully sold on anything. So yeah, it's just it's hard to imagine that mm. but nah just get the, get the trade get into it yeah, yeah. If, if you're unsure of what you want to do get a trade you're going to get paid for your learning and you're going to end up loving it like mm. you're going to end up enjoying it and, and meeting cool people and wanting to be involved like mm. it's a completely different environment to what i experienced at university like it's great mm. it's, it's awesome and i suppose even if you don't enjoy it at the end of the day mm you've still got some amazing skills. You've, you you've can... developed so much. Yeah. You've been paid to do your learning, which mm. is awesome. You don't get that at university. <laughs> you've met Certainly heaps don't. of people and you've gotten so much like real world experience. In, in your four years doing a trade, you are out there. You're not like in a classroom. You have to come to college and do your time there, but mm-hmm. the large majority of your time, you're out real world meeting people, talking to people, mm. seeing all sorts of different things. You, I, I work alongside engineers and scientists and everything. Like, you see that side of the world too, and you can go, oh, geez, I'm glad I did my trade, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the real world experience throughout an apprenticeship just will, will just help you so much. Even if at the end of your time, whatever trade you do, you mm. say, oh, maybe this isn't for me. You know, worse off, you know, you've got mm. real world experience, you've been paid to learn, you've met people, you've seen so much stuff. Like, it's a great way of doing it, mm. Mm. especially if you're unsure of what you want to do. Mm. And it sounds so. It sounds to me like you wouldn't you wouldn't want to go back and take the uni route. No, nah, just no. Nah, I wouldn't. No, nah. absolutely not. Okay. Pretty stoked with the way that I've done it now. Excellent. Um, final question, um, and I think I know what the answer is going to be, but mm-hmm. I'll ask it anyway. Um, if you were starting out again today, yep, would you do it all the same or would there be some things that you would change? Look, I'm not someone to kind of regret anything that I've done or, or want to change the past. Mm. I had a great time traveling, like seeing cool parts of the world and, mm. and whatnot. But the one thing that I'd potentially consider changing is just jumping in my trade straight out of school. Yep. That's the only thing. Mm. I wouldn't wouldn't change my trade, um, but I'd, I'd, if I'd change one thing, that'd be it. 